Hello everyone! Today I'm taking us on a quick little tour of Springtown Cemetery here in North Texas. Now along the way we are going to see a truncated obelisk, we'll see a woodman of the world tree stone, we'll see another tree stone that is not a woodman of the world monument, and we will also see some other interesting things uh, let me look at my list here. Oh yeah, we're also gonna see a handshake. That's very interesting because this handshake lets us know that the deceased was a member of the Freemasons. So you'll want to stick around to the end. It's very fun little video we have here today. Thanks so much for watching. Let's hit the road. from Springtown Cemetery, established in 1854. So here's another cemetery that started, you know, before the Civil War, actually. Uh, it's by a fairly busy road, so we're gonna hear a little bit of road traffic as I go. There you go back. Well, let's take a look. This one has rules posted here. I always like to look by the gate to see if they have uh, like an annual meeting day or if they have any particular rules. Here's a phone number to call. Here's the rules though, let's check them out. So no more than two items on any one headstone at any time. That's interesting. No rooted flowers or plants. All silk or fresh flowers are to be removed by you or your caretaker after 14 days, only two weeks. Yeah, so they've got some pretty strict rules here. All right, now let's take a look. I'm gonna walk through here. There's Larry over there, the hubby and at the car. Boy, they've got another big sign here. Let's run over here. Notice, rules for items placed in the Springtown Cemetery. Yeah, again, they got the same rules. So they really want people to know. You can't put too much. They don't want a lot of grave goods left. And uh, if you want to know what grave goods are, I have a book on that topic. Those are the items that people leave, like stones and coins and seashells and all that stuff. Let's check out this... Uh, historical marker here before we go. Now, now this was established in the 1850s, but it is still in use today. And I always like that, where the history stretches back and, and they're still using the cemetery. So just the, the heritage and the link to this area is very strong. Let's take a little closer look here. They've got a really nice flagpole. This looks like it's about 30 feet in the air, so I don't know. Very cool. Springtown Cemetery. This cemetery first served the area's pioneer settlers in use before the Civil War and before the founding of Springtown. It was included in land patented to Mary Leonard in 1859. The site was later conveyed to the Springtown Methodist Church and the congregation worshiped in an adjacent log cabin for many years the earliest legible gravestone is that of J.E. Arrington, who died in 1854. The original cemetery tract was enlarged in 1901 with a donation of land from local businessmen J.A. Kidd and A.J. Cunningham. Okay, let's take a little look here. I, I'm going to just kind of zip through the more modern stones, see if we can get to the historical ones. Although. Gosh, I truly appreciate these paths that they have. That is such a nice feature in a cemetery because, you know, it keeps you from stepping in ant hills, which I just did. In a, <laughs> if you heard my previous or a different one of the, the one I did just did a little bit ago. Now look at this. Looks like they have a little piece of lariat on this guy's grave. That's, he's got a, he was... Wow, a lot of references. He's got the horseshoes and and then even around the name there, there's last name, he's got a, a lariat. And then right down there, there's an actual lariat. Well, we are in Texas and there are a lot of horsemen around here. Okay, so I'm gonna run out of sidewalk, sadly, but it's nice, it keeps you from stepping on, oh, snakes and all, any, any sort, sort of thing, really. 
making my way along here. Some really nice granite, big granite monuments there. Granite is a very strong stone, a very, on the hardness scale, the Mohs hardness scale, it, it ranks as one of the hardest substances. I am approaching this one that looks a bit like a tree. And if you live in the south, you're pretty familiar with this type of stone. This is a very nice one. This is a woodman of the world. It's not, it's not woodsman. There's no woods in it. It's woodman. And, oh my goodness, I feel a little bit of a breeze on me. I sure hope this new microphone is not catching all that wind. I'm going to get up here and turn around and see if I can break wind. Ha <laughs> ha. Break the well, you know what I mean. <laughs> it's not coming out right. Okay, here we go. There's an obelisk. Oh, I see some other tree stones. Okay, here. Well, now I don't get to see the fancy stuff. This is a Woodman of the World monument, and there was a fraternal organization called Woodman of the World. They still exist today. Today, they're they're not so much a fraternal organization as they are an insurance company. But as a fraternal organization, one of their primary reasons you'd want to become a woodman was because they offered quite a nice death benefit. By that, it meant that the more you paid for your Woodman of the, of the World membership, the bigger tree stone monument you would get. So this stands for the Tree of Life. And we have, looks like some ivy on there to represent friendship. When they were married, if the person were married, you'd probably see a calla lily on there, but I don't see that. You can see it, you can tell it's Woodman of the World because it says Woodman of the World, but also you see the Latin phrase, Dum tacet clamat, which means, though silent, he speaks. And I will have more about fraternal organizations and secret societies and all that, and uh, signs to look for when you're in cemeteries in other videos. It's just such a fascinating topic. I'm really getting low on battery, unfortunately, but I saw this very sweet, heartbreaking little tree stone. Now this is not a Woodman of the World tree stone. This is just to represent the tree of life. And it's just heartbreaking. We have the little lamb on there to let us know this was a, a little child. Uh, you see the two little branches coming off that stands for the parents. This is like the family tree and the, it's been cut short. Just really quite a heartbreaking little monument. Let me see if I can get a better picture of it over here. But that lamb, I gotta say, has really stayed in great shape. This is, there we go, come in a little closer. Budded on earth and to bloom in heaven. Aww. That is really sweet and very sad. There really is a mixture of more modern stones in here along with the older stones. But wow, yikes, look at this. Uh, this is called a truncated obelisk. This shape, it's, it's kind of like an obelisk, but then it's got the four sides that come to points. So anyway, that's called a truncated obelisk. Uh, but yeah, that's like very, <laughs> the reason I'm looking at it is that looks very precarious and I don't want to get too close. In fact, I will use zoom. Let's just take a look at that. Hooey. Now, this is not vandalism. This is just what happens when there's rains and, and you know, it's what Mother Nature can do. Mother Nature, I mean, think about it. She carved the Grand Canyon. She can move monuments. <laughs> she can make some real precarious moments for you in cemeteries. That's something to consider whenever you are, whenever you are walking around, especially if there's been a lot of rain recently, just always be careful. Here, This is sad. They've Someone kind of reconstructed some older graves, some older headstones. They tried to make them, uh, you know, stand upright. They used some metal to reinforce them, and apparently that fell apart eventually as well. This is a very nice handshake we have. Let's take a peek at this. Farewell. George W. Young. So that's probably George's hand there on the left. The deceased, for whatever reason, as you face the headstone, their hand is always the hand on the left. 
and I've asked about why that is and I've tried to really pin it down and I'm not really satisfied with anything I've heard. But what we can tell about this fella, George W. Young, born 1844, died 1883, is that he was a member of the Freemasons, the Masonic Order. That's because the hand that's welcoming him to heaven is most likely one of his fraternal brothers, mentor, or maybe even God himself. But he has that finger extended to let us know that he was a member of the Masons. And if you want to know more about handshakes, hey, go grab my free book. It will explain more about it.